Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Kenya, Assistant Supervisor for Stonecrest Campus, and we have a great Bible lesson for you today. So let's get ready for praise, for fellowship, and for the word. Good morning, Salem family and kids for Christ. I am Miss Terry from your Stonecrest Campus. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you this morning, thanking you, Lord, for this day. For Lord, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We wake up this morning, Father God, putting on the whole armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, Father God, that we may be able to stand against anything, Lord, that's not of you. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done, you're doing, and you're going to do. For Lord, we do not know what lies ahead, but only you do, Lord. And now, Father God, we ask that you come into the midst of our service, Father God. For your word says, Father God, where there's two or three gathered in your name, you will be in the midst. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning again, Salem family and kids for Christ. I am Miss Terry, one of your Stonecrest teachers. Today, the topic of our lesson is the church is the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. Our memory verse will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, 27 from the um, NIV version of the Bible. Again, our memory verse will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. And it reads, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Again, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. Our major points are our bodies are wonderfully made. And we know that our bodies are wonderfully made because God created us. He created each and every one of us. The church is the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of the church. Each believer is a part of the body of Christ. Each believer is the part of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is what? It's the church. Exactly. We are all created differently. I am going to read now the same chapter. 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verses 27 through 31. Verses 27 through 31. Verse 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Verse 28. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, and thirdly, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, of different kinds of tongues. Verse 29, are all apostles, or all prophets, or all teachers? Do all work miracles? Verse 30, do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret it? Now eagerly desires the greater gift. And what do you think the greatest gift is? The greatest gift is love. Love is indispensable. And yet, I will show you the most excellent way. Love is indispensable. And yet, I will show you the most excellent way. Being a follower of Jesus means different things for different people. God has chosen to do different things as the verses tell us. It tells us that and in the church, God has given a place first to apostles. Apostles are each of the 12 chief disciples of Jesus Christ. Secondly, prophets. Prophets, a person regarded as an inspired teacher or proclaimer of the will of God. And thirdly, teachers like myself. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay, he gave us different talents, skills, and special gifts that makes each of us unique. 
invest in doing certain things in our churches and sharing God's word? What are some things that you see people in our church doing? You see people sharing God's word. You see people hugging one another, showing their love. You see the pastor sharing the word, preaching the word, teaching the word to the congregation, which is the church. We are the body of the church. You see people giving encouraging words. How does God use people? How do God use people? God used people, just as I said, to teach, to preach, to uplift one another of encouragement. Can you think of some people who might match with some of the roles outlined in the verses that we just read? Apostles, prophets, teachers. Me, myself, as a teacher. You can share God's word by talking to your friends, playing the video games. You can ask them, did you thank God for waking up this morning? You can ask them, uh, do they have anyone that's sick or anyone that needs prayer? There's a lot of things that we can do as the body of Christ. There's a lot of things that we can do. We don't physically have to be in the church. We can do things virtually. That's as though I am talking to you guys. You can do the same things with your friends while you're playing the game. You can talk to your family while you're at the dinner table. Asking them things that they can do to help out, to help out in the community. You know, we can't physically just go out and, and do things, but like Miss Terry work at the food bank on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we have things set up, you know, so that we won't have direct contact with other people, but there's things that we can do. You may have, you know, the gift of singing. You may can sing to someone, but you know, most of the time people just need um, to know that someone is there to listen to them when they're going through. It's not always about giving money or, you know, what you can do um, as a, from a financial standpoint, but just be a listening ear sometimes to someone. You'll be surprised as what you can do by just listening. Apart from that, the things that we just listed, can you think of how others in the church use their gifts, their talents, their skills, either in the church or by sharing God's word? We can use prayer. Prayer is always, when you don't know what to do for someone, have no earthly clue, idea, always offer prayer. And when you don't know what to say when praying, just ask God to speak for you and through you. And that way, you know that your prayers will be answered because we look to God for which cometh our help. God is there for us. Regardless of what's going on, just remember, God is there and he's going to see us through the pandemic and all the other issues and problems and things that are going on. Remember, the church is the body of Christ and that means us. We are a part of the body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of it. Be blessed. I love you guys. Continue to read your word, have that communication with God, share with others, give praise report, give thanks to God each and every day. No matter what you're going through, we're all in it together and we're going to get through. I love you. Be blessed. Continue to have a blessed week until we meet again. Now I'm going to turn you over to Miss Kenya Adams for your activity. Love you guys. Goodbye. Today's activity is titled One Body, Many Parts. You are tracing your body. So you would need a pencil, some paper, crayons, color pencils, or markers. Once you are done tracing your body and it is cut out, you will write some 
skills or talents that can be performed in the body of Christ, which is the church. So your activity should look something like this when it's completed. This is your body that is cut out. On top is your skill, skills or talents. You may see creative or Miss Kenya's body because her skill or talent in the body of Christ is being creative. If you've been to the Stonecrest location, you have seen the hallways, the bulletin boards, the classroom, or the doorways. That's Miss Kenya's skills or talents performed in the body of Christ. Now, you write your skills or talents on your body and send photos to ministries at SalemBibleChurch.org as we would love to share them. Now, let's get in prayer position for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, all that you have done and all that you continue to do, O oh Lord. We ask for your peace to overtake our hearts and embrace our minds. And we ask that your word and promises quiet any worries or any anxiety thoughts, anxious thoughts that may fill our heads. We give you all the things that are beyond our control and put them in your hands, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we go, there are a few announcements. Follow us on all our social media outlets. Make sure you are registering your kids by July 19th via our registration form on SalemBibleChurch.org so that you can receive a ding whenever we send out anything involving our children and youth ministry. Again, the deadline date to do that is July 19th. As we have great things in store for our children and youth ministry in the month of July. Here's a few hints on what's to come. Three different things or events, a reschedule, fun, and supplies. So register, check your emails, and check our social media outlets. Stay safe. We love you, and we'll see you right here next Sunday. Bye-bye.